Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Unshowdown. I uh, just update my guide. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we will go in the NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the... Um, overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now, just before going inside of the game, a weird thing is Crytek did update the DLSS version of this game. When they start with the new engine, I don't remember by art, but it was something like 2.2.5, something like that. 
And it was pretty bad, the, the version of the LSS that they were using. So that's why I didn't recommend in my oldest guide to use the LSS. Now it's a lot better. You're getting the 3.7.1. I tried to update it with the new version, the 3.8.10, but the LSS will disappear in the game if you use that. So uh, don't, 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 don't do it. Just keep the uh, native version that they put in it. So now... Let's go inside of the game. If we look at the resolution, make sure that you're playing native over there. So depending on your monitor, in my case, it's 1440p. Window mode, super important to play full screen. You will have more FPS, less input lag. V-Sync, always disactivate. You, are, you want the lowest input lag in a game like this. Something's weird about this one. You can activate it. You apply and NVIDIA reflex will be there. So uh, use it at enable if you have an NVIDIA card. After that, go at off and apply. Uh, it's a bit tricky. In the config file, you will see that it's there. Uh, so I guess it's working. I saw a, a small difference. But uh, yeah, it doesn't cost anything to do that. Max FPS, I unlock my FPS to have the lowest input lag. The only issue with that, it really depends on your computer. If you're getting some crazy drops, sometimes it's better to lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz of your monitor. Uh, because sometimes you go inside of the compound or you just go out and you just lost like 60 FPS straight up and you get a, a big like stuttering. So it really depends. If you're running the game easily, honestly, just unlock. Uh, if not, lock it with your amount of Hertz on your computer. Depth of field motion blur, you don't want to use that to have a better visibility. RAM usage, you can push it at 90%. And this is the VRAM that you're currently using. Honestly, uh, on, it's not too grady uh, when you will uh, use my parameter. So uh, normally, if you have 6 gig and more VRAM, it should not be an issue. After that, super resolution. So you have some upscaling over there. You have off the LSS or FSR. So to give you an example, if you're playing F uh, the LSS at quality mode, normally you will run your, your game at 70% of the resolution of that you selected and after that the ai will upscale it back um the best way to play on is at the laa you will have the best uh, image quality you're playing native and also you're using the anti-aliasing to uh, re-upscale your game because the game honestly uh it's pretty bad the anti-aliasing in this game I, my only recommendation is use the one x one and it's very pixelated I'm not a fan of it. If you go too much, too higher with uh, the anti-aliasing, the game looks very blurry. So not a good thing for a game uh, like a on showdown. So my recommendation, if you don't have any issue with your FPS, go DLSS at DLA mode. If you need FPS, go in quality mode. In quality mode, you're going to get 10 to 12% uh, boost in your FPS. And you will still have a decent image quality. Lower than that, the game looks too blurry for me so i'm not a huge fan of it me i'm playing at dlla and also you have the sharpness slider that you can change if you feel that your game is too blurry go higher if you feel it looks too much like an instagram filter go lower in my case i like to play at 0.6 if you have an amd car i recommend it's pretty much the same thing at fsr i recommend to go with native aa mode if you want pure image quality if not go with quality and again uh, change your sharpness over there and uh, if you don't use that, but use SMAA1X, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go back to DLSS, DLLA. After that, global graphic, you can put it at custom because we're going to change some graphic parameter. Object quality, I recommend to go with I. It's a good compromise to have a decent image quality and not too much impact in your FPS. Texture quality, I recommend to go with I with texture filtering at 16x. Uh, if you have more than 6 gig of VRAM, if you have 4 gig of VRAM, go medium. Less than 4 gig, go with low. And maybe adjust it with uh, the uh, texture filtering 8x at medium and 4x at low, something like that. Uh, and yeah, 16x, I did some tests between 1x, 4x. Honestly, 16x, you have a small edge uh, that uh, it will be a little bit more precise and a little bit less blurry. So that's why I'm using it at 16x. Lighting quality, I recommend to go with high. Uh, less noise when you're playing the game. So this one can be nice and you're going to lose like 1% in your FPS. Global illumination, this one is huge. Uh, first of all, you're going to lose a lot of FPS. Uh, for each bracket, so I don't recommend to go uh, very high with this. But if you compare low and medium, that's pretty crazy in like a cavern or a, you're in a house and it's very dark. The diffusion of the light is a lot better with medium and you will see better 
your enemy with this one. Shadow quality, shadow filtering, go with low. You're going to expect a 15% boost over there. Pretty huge. Effect quality, low also if you don't want crazy drop when you're fighting or explosion and something like that. Post process, go with low. You can expect 4% boost and a lot more uh, clarity in your game. Visibility, it's very blurry when you go a little bit higher with this one. Particle quality, low also. Water quality can run medium or high, not a huge difference in your FPS. And you, you will remove some noise in your water quality, pixel and stuff like that if you're playing at low. So you can definitely run high air, no problem. Fog quality, I recommend to go with low. You can expect 6% boost in your FPS. And all those view distance at low over there. Performance stats, you can play basic. If you want more, you can definitely use detail. And for GPU tessellation, you can run on easily, uh, honestly, if... <laughs> Except if you're playing maybe in a 50-year-old card, uh, 15, sorry. But uh, for the past, like, 6 or 7 generation, now Tessellation is not an issue. And you will see better, like, a rock in the, in the, um, on the floor. It will be more 3D-ish than flat. So I recommend to use that add-on. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Unshowdown guide in 2025. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.